uh, yeah, I'm going to present the Urban Sensing project. Uh, it's actually a self-initiated uh, project and everything that uh, I will show is actually work in progress. The project will only be finished um, around February next year. Uh, so nothing is definitive and everything will probably change, um, but I still wanted to show some stuff. Uh, we started with uh, this question uh, for the project. Can we develop a new product for the urban design, city planning and urban management market? A platform extracting patterns of use and citizens' perceptions related to city spaces uh, through analysis of user-generated content shared by the city's users and inhabitants over social networks and digital media. Um, so we wanted to develop uh, a platform and a tool, and that's what we do a lot at our studio. We wanted to make tools that other people can use. Uh, we actually think that the future uh, of media lies in the design of its use. Uh, we actually uh, started a few years ago uh, by something that got our interest, uh, the riots in, uh, in London, and we developed quickly uh, what we call a sort of tweet browser, uh, scraping all the tweets during these riots. And um, yeah, just very simple, you could just type in uh, words that you would search for, and it would give you um, yeah, patterns of how these words would, would appear in the, in the city and uh, on which times, for instance. So I think this is lunch. Uh, and the previous one was helicopter, which you can actually sort of see hel the helicopter fly to the city, uh, observing people. Um, and everything in the little uh, circle um, is highlighted through the words on the site. Uh, so it gets all the content. And yeah, that's actually what we're super interested in. Um, yeah, how you can make, um, actually create content from um, very tiny amounts of content and extract uh, patterns out of that. So, yeah, for instance, a little tweet, just 140 characters, uh, can actually mean a lot. Um, it can be all kinds of things like form, literature, poetry, etc. cetera. Um, but through contextualizing, you can actually do a lot. So for instance, using the internet as a tool to um, yeah, really gather more information, you can, for instance, just determine color palettes, like in this case, like where uh, you uh, determine color palettes by searching for fog or for terms like America or porn. Uh, and then you can apply that also to uh, more detailed content, like real words. And of course, these are all experiments that we're doing, and they're not 100% uh, correct, but there are certain patterns that we find very interesting, like all things that have to do with humans, for instance, uh, also have sort of human flesh colors or something. Uh, and we're currently developing this further and further. Um, like these are also things that we just do along the side. Um, we try to develop our own tools for, um, yeah, just having one word, in this case, Aaron Swartz. Um, and then to try to develop tools, how you can uh, extract meaning uh, from, from those words. So it gives you possible reasons why a, a certain term or a certain keyword uh, was um, peaking at a certain time. So in this case, it was the suicide of, of, uh, of Aaron Swartz. Um, one of the founders of Reddit and uh, developers of uh, C, um, what was it, R RSS. So that's kind of yeah, the realm that we're working in. And then uh, we're trying to develop tools like this where um, yeah, you can um, geographically plot information and then trying to sort of also create narratives out of that. So possible reasons why things are happening, why they are happening at certain places. Up to very detailed uh, information, actually. Um, yeah, so we, we're scraping, or we're developing a tool where we're scraping um, tweets, geographically located tweets, uh, Foursquare, um, Instagram, but basically all the social networks that we can scrape uh, and building an interface for it where um, yeah, you can just listen to a certain part of a city or a country 
and then distill certain patterns out of it. These are some tests that we did uh, around Milan uh, during the um, Salone di Mobile. Uh, and then certain patterns emerge, for instance, uh, like how people are using the city. And because Salone di Mobile is, of course, not something um, really only for the inhabitants of, of Milan, but from people all over the world, you see how people use the city on different times, for instance. So you get a different notion of how a city is, um, is, is working, uh, not limited by the administrative uh, like details, like uh, how quarters are usually um, divided. Um, yeah, this is just some, some, some images from the Netherlands and just, I think, one week of, uh, of tweets um, where, yes, yeah, so some nice things uh, that actually are happening is that you actually see the highways uh, so, I guess a lot of people are still tweeting in, in the car. And then we're building interfaces where you can uh, manipulate um, the, the data uh, and visualize the data in, in, in many different ways. Um, because in the end, we want this thing to be a tool uh, for normal people, but also for uh, municipalities, for instance, to uh, see how people are using the city. And uh, now, in this representation, all those um, uh, tweets and social media activities are just dots. Um, but now, we're currently, of course, we're working on uh, how you can really get uh, yeah, information out of it and see patterns on how people are using the city. Um, yeah, just some tries with uh, sort of heat map representations. Um, other visualizations, uh, Amsterdam uh, in one week, uh, plus uh, a little bit of uh, Schiphol appearing. Um, but also doing experiments with um, actually representing the data by putting the text in, in the maps itself, uh, trying to follow how people are traveling to the country, so only plotting um, people that move from one place to another one, to another place. Uh, or mapping um, emotions uh, of, of people and how they're feeling, sentiment, uh, positive or negative. And it appears that uh, in most of the cities, actually, people feel more negative, seeing to the uh, red, red dots. Uh, so I guess uh, people on outside of the cities are a little bit more happy. Um, but also um, during the um, uh, uproar in, uh, in uh, Turkey, Istanbul, uh, we also decided to, uh, to, to listen to what people are talking about, the, the, the Taksim Square uh, uproar. Um, and we listened to all the tweets that people were, were tweeting for, I think, two weeks or something. Um, and actually we discovered that uh, there were actually not that many people tweeting from Taksim Square, um, but many more people from actually the, the clubs from uh, around the Bosporus uh, uh, side. So um, in that sense, yeah, if you study the materials that come out of it, you get really different insights and in how also see sort of how media are uh, a very big influence on, on how um, yeah, different topics get uh, appreciated in, in, in the press and uh, on television shows. Mm, yeah, just some different ways of how, to, how we thinking of visualizing the information, um, thinking of um, detecting uh, how people are moving through a city on different times, um, following, um, yeah, sort of the, the directions, uh, and visualizing that in all kinds of different ways. So it really needs to be a tool um, where visualization is an integral, in, uh, um, yeah, in, integral part of, of, of the tool. Um, but also really different ways of visualizing, not only dots and those kind of things, but in this case we're taking Google Maps, uh, Google Street View images, and actually plotting them back, uh, forming a sort of tubes. Uh, where later you can then really also really dive inside. So, uh, because all the, the information that we're scraping is uh, geographical uh, based, 
uh, we always know where something is happening, so we have a lot of possibilities to use that in, uh, in, in the things that we're working with. Uh, but then you can also do things like uh, combine it with where people are tweeting, for instance, just highlighting and uh, making cities appear like that. Uh, and then putting the information back on the places where, it, where they actually originated. Um, and this is just a very early, early demo. Um, this thing will probably really, really change uh, in the end. Um, uh, because this doesn't... Um, well, it works for a small data set, but we really need it to be super fast. Uh, and each message that is um, put in, in the tweet database should be really accessible and um, uh, analyzable. And in this version, that was all not, not happening yet. Um, but more like a proof of concept where you could do a little bit of things. You could listen to different um, uh, weeks, for instance, in, in of, over time, so one, I think this is Milan, um, one I think during uh, Salon de Mobile and one normal holiday week in August, uh, not a lot of uh, Italians are in Milan of course in, in August. Um, and then through filtering uh, you can yeah, see where people are doing stuff at certain times. Um, you can select certain areas and start to sort of follow uh, people, like where uh, do, where are they, and where are they going next? For instance, like for instance, I think one of those boxes is actually uh, around the university. So where are students going? Um, but you could also do that for where people are that are in a um, uh, like a shopping street or something. Where are they coming from and where are they going, going to? Can select dates and they go to several different places. And then you can also visualize the information on this, uh, on this map in really different ways. Uh, more heat maps uh, and adapt basically everything. Um, so yeah, the, there's a lot of plans for uh, the coming, coming months till, uh, till February. I uh, want to include uh, a lot of things like public transport sources and open data sets, so combine um, more static sets with really dynamic sets. Um, uh, we're experimenting a lot with semantic analysis for, for text. So what does stuff mean? Uh, where are the people talking about? What are the abbreviations that they, that they use? Uh, a lot of sentiment analysis and emotion detection and uh, contextualization engines. Um, yeah, so that's it for now.